Hello and welcome to another Alpha Audio video. Today I'm going to discuss the huge speaker cable test we did. 32 cables and uh, over 400 measurements, maybe 500 I think. It was quite a uh, an investigation so to say. Um, we did that test just like the huge interlink test uh, with 32 interlinks because we hear a difference between cables but uh, no one actually really investigated deeply why that is uh, maybe i'm wrong maybe someone did that and i'm sorry if you are watching right now and you did a huge task like we did on this uh, loudspeaker cable test with the interlink test, we did some measurements uh, and some are the same as with uh, these speaker cables and some are different because speaker cables are vastly different from inter interconnects and interlinks. Um, the whole environment is different, so to say, because you have the output impedance of the amplifier, say uh, 0 0.1 ohms, and then you have a loudspeaker with also a very low impedance, uh, 8 ohm nominal or maybe even 4 ohm nominal. And impedance is not straight, so it goes all over the place. Some even dip to uh, 1.5 ohms or something like that. And that makes the influence of a cable a lot bigger. But, strangely enough, I think, and uh, my colleague Martijn agrees, that it was less audible. I think an interlink makes a bigger impact on the sound quality than a loudspeaker cable. And I don't know why. Maybe because the current is bigger and maybe the voltage is bigger than with an interlink that the impact of a loudspeaker cable is less than with an interlink or an interconnect. But we did some measurements and it's all posted on the website uh, on paragraph 3. We did frequency response measurement on the prism with a real loudspeaker and we did a boat plot measurement on the picoscope as well, of course with the black box from uh, Kees Ruitenberg, Ruitenberg Consulting with the right impedances and, well, honestly, most speaker cables measure pretty straight if you go for a normal dummy load. As soon as you connect the loudspeaker and a real amplifier, you see that they actually do differ. And the differences are sometimes very small in frequency response and sometimes very big. And what I noticed, and it's not rocket science in this case is that the higher the impedance of the loudspeaker cable the bigger the differences are becoming and that makes sense because the damping factor of an amplifier is greatly influenced by the impedance of a loudspeaker cable now you can calculate that i did that on the website for you and then you can see that if a loudspeaker cable like this one it's the van den hull uh, inspiration this one measures pretty low and that's a good thing but this one uh, oh the cloud uh, measures pretty high this has an impedance of around 0.6 ohms now that might sound very low but for a loudspeaker cable that measures three meters and i measure all the way through the cable so that's six meters 0.6 ohms is pretty high and I was wondering if we could hear that well yes you can uh, Martijn didn't really know what loudspeaker cable was uh, attached and I did but I don't know the impact I just measure it I actually don't remember the measurements because there's so many you can actually hear that and it's not that this cable sounds bad it doesn't it sounds pretty good but it feels very different from the Inspiration Hybrid. It's, the Inspiration Hybrid is much more loose, it's much more neutral. The Hybrid uh, Cloud 3T is actually pretty damped, so to say. Um, 
so impedance is one of the things that really impacts uh, sound quality and you can buy two and a half millimeter squared wire that sounds pretty decent but we also had the the supra classic it's two and a half millimeter squared it's very good for the price i mean it's like four euros a meter you can't go wrong with that but is it equally good as a decent uh, speaker cable that adds a little bit more luxury no it's not equally good um we had some very cheap cables that sounded pretty good. We had some very expensive cables that didn't sound really good. But yeah, to be fair, the best one we had was around a thousand euros. And that's still a lot of money. And that's the best one we had in our system. It doesn't mean it's the same in your system. But we measured some other stuff. So impedance, remember that. Impedance is pretty important for a loudspeaker cable but we also measured phase and that's a weird one because i can't actually draw any conclusions from that because we compared cables in terms of phase and we used a 500 kilohertz uh, sine wave for that um, the reason why we use high frequency is explained in the review or in the article um, there are differences there are simply differences in phase. But if I wanted to draw any conclusions from that, I had to have one benchmark and then compare all the cables to that benchmark and then even compare the cables that sound different to each other. And that's just too much work in, in this case because we have 32 cables. I think it, I would need to do at least 100 measurements on phase alone uh, if I want to have any idea what that means. Uh, but there are differences in phase. And it's not related to propagation time. Nor propagation variance. And that's what strikes me. Because I compared one of the fastest. I think it's one of the Nordost cables. They're really fast. Uh, with one of the slowest. And that was the Cloud 3T. And the difference is smaller than with another faster cable. So it's not related to that. I think it has something to do with capacitance or maybe inductance, but even that was not a straightforward answer to why there are differences in phase. There just are. Um, one, of, one of the other measurements that was, that was striking was noise. Um, I connected the uh, tectronic scope to our function generator and I didn't use any signal. So it was kind of a system in idle state. And what strikes me is that this cable, uh, this one, the Kimber uh, Carbon 8, I think it was called. This one measured vastly different in terms of noise from this one. And that's the Kimber 8PR. And the 8PR is very, very silent. Uh, it has to do with the ge geometry and the material used. Because the geometry is actually quite the same, because it's also a Kimber cable. But when we swapped the cables, what immediately, immediately stood out was how silent the Kimber 8PR is. It's really black. And it also measures very, very black. There's hardly any noise. But with the 8C, it's different. The Carbon 8 isn't really silent. And as soon as that cable was in the system, I could hear the difference. It was like, wow, this isn't really as black as the 8PR. Now, does the 8C sound worse? No, it doesn't. Uh, so it's just what you're looking for. If you want a very high energetic cable, uh, you don't buy the 8PR because it just isn't a very high energetic cable. Then you go for, I don't know, uh, Ricable. It's Magnus. It's a very energetic, dramatic sounding cable, so to say. Very Italian. Um, and uh, with the um, audio quest, this was also very... Uh, very funny to see. Let me grab it because it's uh, a lot of people 
say that the uh, a lot of people say that the DBS system doesn't do anything. Well, that's actually not true because it does. Um, this is the Rocket Eleven from AudioQuest, and it sounds very different from, for example, this very expensive cable from AudioQuest. This is the Firebird Zero, and uh, it's twenty grand. Uh, is it worth the money? That's up to you. But it's it sounded really good. Um, but all the zero tech cables had some of the same signature. It's very mild in the treble. It's very fluid in the mid range, and uh, the bass is actually not as massive as I'm used to with AudioQuest because I owned a AudioQuest Oak for a while, and it was a very boo round sounding cables that's that's very different with the zero tech it's very nimble and soft and uh actually pretty fast it's it's weird but we measured the noise with and without the dps system and we did that before on the lcr and yes you see a difference and uh with digital cables you definitely see a difference um but with speaker cables, it's really hard to prove that the DBS system does a actually do anything. With interlinks, it's the same, but uh, I forgot to do it with the interlinks. But now I could. There is a difference in noise pattern. I'm not sure if it's lower, but there is a difference in the noise spectrum. The pattern of the noise is, is different, with, uh, different with DBS on and off. And uh, you can see it in the article I posted all the measurements in the in the article so you can see it over there um, and we did some uh, LCR measurements of course but like inductance capacitance and impedance and uh, I could relate some stuff I mean capacitance has an influence on speed and propagation variance simple as that you want a low capacitance and you need a low inductance in order to get the impedance down and with a signal cable like the uh, interlinks that's not really important because impedance doesn't influence the quality of a uh, interlink not at all because the impedances are already very high the output impedance is low but the input impedance is high so the cable doesn't have any influence in terms of impedance but with speaker cables the, it does because the both sides are actually pretty low in impedance so if you want a low impedance, you need a low inductance. And if you want a low inductance, the capacitance go up and you get a slower cable. So it's kind of a tricky balance that all the producers need to make. And uh, it's actually really hard to make a good cable. And you can say whatever you want. You can believe in cables or not. I don't care. I don't sell cables. I test cables. And like with the interlink test, most cable producers that actually uh, uh, send in their cables are not sponsors. So please stop saying that I'm bought or that they pay me to say this. They don't. Most of them don't have a business relationship with Alpha Audio. Some do, and it's not, not a, a secret at all, but they know who they send it to. They don't actually influence me by calling me or stopping uh, campaigns or anything like that and if they do they do that that's how it works um this was kind of the summary um i thought that the influence of a speaker cable would be higher than with an interlink it isn't i thought the differences were bigger with the interlinks than with the speaker cables uh, that's weird i didn't expect that outcome but it's what it is the biggest influence like i said is impedance and noise. You could hear both very, very well. Uh, to keep the noise down, you need some, some, some form of special geometry and shielding and stuff like that. And that makes it very, very hard for a producer to create a neutral sounding cable because everything you put on there has an influence on the outcome. Um, Non-shielded cables sound different from shielded cables. Cables with high impedance sound very different from cables with low impedance in case of speaker cables. Our next project, yes, I'm not stopping with cable research yet, uh, is that I'm going to construct three or four maybe interlinks and uh, they all have the same conductor. They all have the same geometry, but I'm going to swap out the shielding and dielectrum 
dielectric materials uh, because I want to know what it does. If everything is the same, how does a dielectric material and shielding influence sound quality? So that's our ne next project, but it will be way after high end Munich because I'm really, I need a holiday. <laughs> but first high end Munich, and then I'm gonna take some days off uh, because I really need it. it. It was a very, very heavy project. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.